Hey, why y'all think they want to get rid of mama so bad? Why you think they want to put eugenics on a nugget? Why you think they want to change the emblem of Amaruk? Look at beautiful mama. They want mama. <laughs> really, man, they, they want to exterminate the seed, but they want to keep enough mamas around so they can keep dipping back in to the original oregano flow, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? It's like they know they can't really exist without us completely. <clears throat> so when we talk about eugenics, we talk about, you know, war on a naga. This is for them to keep control of their slaves. Because once somebody got a slave master mentality, they ain't ever going to lose it. You think these people came with slave master mentalities and then suddenly today these generations are so different today. I'm talking black. I'm talking white. I'm talking Filipino and Asian. I'm talking everybody. <laughs> everybody, you know what I'm saying, that's, you know, come with this type of invasion on the originals, you know what I'm saying, of that land. You could be black, that don't mean all oh, this is your land. Where is your land, black man? Where is your tribal land? See, people want to put it all together, put a whole black race together when it's convenient. But when you start speaking tribal and tribal land, they act like, do not compute, we do not compute. Nigga, my nigga. <laughs> the creator gave each tribe their land, they had their trees, <laughs> they had their gardens. You can't just be anywhere. You know that don't. You in the streets, right? You from the streets, my night? Everywhere ain't your, you know what I'm saying, your turf, you know what I mean? <laughs> your hood is over there. Your hood is not over there. So when do you just get to walk around saying, the earth is my turf? No, where is your lot? Remember, the creator divided the lots. Joshua separated the lots for the tribes. This is what we fighting for. Now you're acting like you don't respect no boundaries. You just want this latitude and longitude. Now, I'm, I'm speaking to, you know, Nagas that look like us. But as far as Nagas that don't look like us, I mean, come on. <laughs> Why do you think they want to exterminate, eradicate a Naga? But it's a complex thing because they also know that they can't really live on this earth plane without you Nagas, right? They, they need you, not just for slave labor. They literally need you. <laughs> <laughs> they need your frequency. Man, if there was no you on this earth, what do you think the creator would do to this place? We are the ones stopping the creator from doing like treacherous, <laughs> treacherous things to this land, man. We are the, it's like they're hold, holding us hostage, <laughs> pretty much, so that they don't get blam blamed by these dragons like crazy. So they need us here, but yet they want to. You know, keep us in chaos. They want to try to keep control of us, control of our numbers. But this is what America look like. And these are emblems <laughs> of America, man. You know, they got their emblem of Africa, right? It's an emblem of Africa, man. Peace and power to the to the queen. You know what I'm saying? That's the emblem of Africa. Shout out to Penn Interest. <clears throat> shalak, shalak, man, we popping off, man. That's the emblem of Africa, right? And this is the emblem of America, man. Now, you're not going to see a whole lot of difference with the melanation. With this tribe over here, this is their lot, right? This is their land. <laughs> and the tribe in Africa, that's their lot. That's their land. Whether we're talking Shem, Yapeth, or Ham, right? If we're talking biblical sense, if we're talking biblical tribe. Yeah, this is mama. Yeah, you know, they tried to brighten her up a little bit in the modernized photos or paintings. <laughs> but nah, man, you know, mama's mama, man. So why do you think they want to put this eugenics on us, man? Let's keep it going. Shout out to Straight Up, man. Straight Up is doing his thing. You see my voice is going crazy, man. I've been I've been training, man. I've been getting in, man. You know what I'm saying? And doing a lot of ha, ah, wah, you know. When I punch and kick, it's ha, ah, wah. <laughs> yeah, man, try that, man. Get that power, man. So excuse my voice, man. All right. Fair use of your caboose. 
Hey, shalom to the tribe. Halahua, straight up like that. And we all the way up, man. Hey, fair use, man. We're going to do some teaching, some, you know, criticisms and report and scholarship. We're going to look at this joint. We're going to do some recon. All right, let's get back to it, man. Y'all been asking for part two. Well, look at here, go. <laughs> and again, halahua, I hope you're getting through everything you need to get through. Being steady, being patient. And, uh, you know, man, every time is, every day is like a new checkpoint. So don't hold on to no negative energy from yesterday, man. All right? Do me that, man. Hey, do me that solid. Drop me. Don't hold on to the negative energy from the past, man. The past, it's in the past. <laughs> hey, man. When we talk about getting our land back, we don't, we're not holding on to the negative energy of it. <clears throat> so like we're, we're, we're tuning in to the frequency of, of victory, of, of redemption, man. So our frequency is about cooling up, rising up. It's not about death and destruction and murder and genocide and everything. They want to keep us repeating and all that stuff. Nah, man. But we have to still go through it. We got to feel the pain. We got to feel the death. We got to feel the destruction. And this eugenics, man, is straight up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, on point, man, you know? <laughs> straight up, you know what I mean? So they hopped to straight up. Hey, man, shit, man, let's get it, man. Wow, wow. American history. If you are new to my channel and this is the first video you've seen, do yourself and me a favor and check out several of my past videos first. The topics I discuss and the information I uncover slash rediscover are deep and totally fly in the face of the current history we have been fed. All right, so if you're still with me, I think you will really be fascinated by this video. But be warned, I'm going to hit you with a lot of information. You may want to grab your favorite beverage and get cozy. So yeah. let me emphasize what this video is all about. How eugenics was used to erase black history. Another way to put it is, why do so many people around the world currently believe that Europe and the Americas, meaning North and South America, were always ruled by people we currently identify and label as white? Mm. Now, for those of you that have watched my video <clears throat> before, should understand that the label white person is a status a status that has changed greatly since the turn of the 20th century. So, back to what I was saying. As we all can see, Europe and the United States currently have large populations of people that identify as white, and for the most part are ruled by people that identify as white people. How did this come to pass, and why do many, if not most, believe this has always been the case? I have two words for you, white supremacy and eugenics. Bang. Although I've been MIA for several months, I was not sitting on my hands contemplating my navel, as my old math teacher loved to say. What I am doing is constantly researching ancient and current history, for as we all know, history is being made as we live our lives minute by minute. So one of the books I read was War Against the Weak, authored by Edwin Black. This book was extremely revealing, very credible, and very well researched. Mr. Black went out of his way to ensure that the information that went into his book was verified several times over. His access to information that most will never experience was unprecedented in my opinion. This book to me was the key that explains how American and European history was whitewashed and it also explains why to this day whitewashed history is still being taught. My only issue with Mr. Black's book, and I will get into it further later in this video, is his focus on how the evils of eugenics was waged on poor, uneducated, mentally impaired whites, and secondly, other ethnic and social groups. But he never emphasizes that people of color received the worst outcome because black folks, aka people of color, were victims of everything that happened to the white people in the categories I just mentioned. In addition to that, black people's history was rewritten and appropriated still to this day via systematic racism. I know based on all the information I have researched and that I have been able to piece together in my past videos, that Mr. Black and his researchers, while conducting research in various countries, came across not only written proof of significant people of color in European and American history, but also visual proof. Yet I fear they chose not to reveal this historical information, but instead focused mostly on the past transgressions against white people. Please don't think that I'm diminishing the atrocities committed against white people. However, unlike black people, in what are presently majority white countries, they do not continue to suffer systematically. I will also share why I believe Mr. Black chose this course of action as we go along in this video. So, I don't know how many of you watching know what the word you just means, 
So let's take a look at the definition provided by the online Merriam-Webster Dictionary. All right, so eugenics is a noun, and it goes on to say, the practice or advocacy of controlled selective breeding of human populations as by sterilization to improve the population's genetic composition. In 1883, Francis Galton in England coined the term eugenics to encompass the idea of modification of natural selection through the selective breeding for the improvement of humankind, Jeremiah A. Brondes. A half century ago, eugenics became associated with Hitler, genocide, and mass race theories, and its reputation has never recovered. Dan Seligman. Then it goes on to say, after the Second World War, eugenics became a word to be hedged with caveats in Britain and virtually a dirty word in the United States, where it had long been identified with racism. Daniel J. Cavells. Now let's also define the term white supremacy. I will again use the definition provided by the online Merriam-Webster Dictionary. All right, so white supremacy is a noun, and it goes on to say, the belief that the white race is inherently superior to other races and that white people should have control over people of other races. The alt-right is a reactionary conservative movement. It is characterized by an embrace of fascism, white supremacy, and misogyny. Constance Grady. Under number two, it says the social, economic, and political systems that collectively enable white people to maintain power over people of other races. William Kelly turned his considerable intellect and imagination to the question of what it is like to be white in this country and what it is like for all Americans to live under the conditions of white supremacy. Katherine Schultz. All right, so those are the two definitions I'd like us to keep in mind as we go through this video. I have been trying to figure out how and why history was rewritten and beyond that, how it was adopted worldwide. Well, folks, this video will delve into exactly those two questions, how and why. So now that we've dealt with the definitions of eugenics and white supremacy, let me move on to say, as I've conducted my research over the last several years, trying to figure out at what point did American society change? I kept coming back to the end of the American Civil War and the time during Reconstruction. Some of this information was covered in my last video, The Black Southern Confederacy. Mm -hmm. Looking at the time period of approximately 12 years between 1865 and approximately 1877 is when the country underwent a radical shift. <clears throat> Not only did men labeled as Negroes obtain the ability to vote as a direct consequence of the North winning the Civil War, but also slavery slash indentured servitude for people labeled as Negroes and people labeled as white was illegal in the United States after the ratification of the 13th Amendment of the United States Constitution. The ruling class that depended on slavery slash indentured servitude before the Civil War now had to pay wages for labor. Now we're going to look at the term antebellum. Um, this home, you know, many would consider like an antebellum home or they say the term means before the war, you know what I mean? But we're going to break it down a little more. <laughs> but uh, if you notice, we actually started from the top because last time we belly flopped at the 29 minute mark. So we never started at the beginning. So we had to define our own terms. But I'm glad he did take the time to go through that, man. So straight up, you got the drop. We're going to talk antebellum, antebellum or antibellum. We got to dig on that, man. Let's go. This seriously disrupted the way of life and how these families made their wealth, attained their social status and influence. Again, I must remind you, the wealthy were not just the non-melanated people, a.k.a. white people. Mm. It was also Europeans of color, a.k.a. black Europeans, that were very much a part of this ruling class. Uh -oh. With the end of the war, Congress passed the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery. Then Reconstruction was put into place by the Republican-led administration of Abraham Lincoln. And please, don't confuse it with today's Republican Party. It was done to try to right the wrongs done to those who were enslaved by the societal structure and the rule of law that had been put in place throughout the United States, Indigenous. especially in the southern states for decades. Unfortunately, Reconstruction efforts that held real promise for formerly enslaved people did not last. The equality promise did not come to pass. All right, so you may ask yourselves, what happened to the Reconstruction efforts that the Republicans abolishing slavery. One more time. Then Reconstruction was put into place by the Republican-led administration of Abraham Lincoln. And please, don't confuse it with today's Republican Party. It was done to try to right the wrongs done to those who were enslaved by the societal structure. Indigenous Negroes. Ain't that something? I mean, don't that kind of 
jolt your memory a little bit. Indigenous Negroes. <laughs> Negroes found here. Copper color race found here. You've been stripped of your titles. You've been stripped of your, your land, your homes. See this big home in the back? That would be an antebellum home. That's your home. That's that's their that's the home they built. But now they gotta work the field in their own land. The plantations were just Naga land, but now you gotta work your own fields. They put the indigenous Negro to work on his own fields, on her own fields, on her own land. Then they rewrote history and said all black people come from Africa. Darwinism, uh, evolution, all this stuff, right? And if you claim America, you're now cultural vote. You're now a cultural vulture <laughs> on the, you know, those that uh, publicly claim and have their, uh, what you call it, you know, they, they got their acceptance and, you know, whatever the case is. And everyone's going through it, man. Look. Everyone's going through it. I understand that not just our people have suffered and are suffering and all this, but you got to stand. You got to understand the fall of these indigenous Negroes is the fall of the entire world. I need you to get that through your noodle. I need to bake your noodle with this one. The fall of these indigenous cons is the fall of the earth. I know it seems like some people are balling. I understand you got millionaires and billionaires with some fake money, fiat money, some fake ad, fake system. But it's fake. We didn't need none of that. We were at peace. We got rolled up on these indigenous Negroes. I know it seems like they ain't heaven, but really, man, come on. If you got to keep invading the people and lying and deceiving them, Mutilating and genociding on the Naga, violating the nigga, violating our people. You got to keep violating us to survive, then that's one hell of a heaven you got. If you in heaven, that's one hell of a heaven, you know what I mean? If you got to keep invading the Naga just to survive, you weren't given land by the Creator? It's not your fault we lost our land, it's our fault we lost our land. We know that. We didn't KTC. We turned on each other. That's our fault. That's our greatest failure. And that's our greatest weapon when we unify. We know that. We unify, that's our greatest weapon. We divided, that's our greatest failure. And this is what happened, man. That's the story <laughs> of the indigenous Khan. And the rule of law that have been put in place throughout the United States especially in the southern states for decades. Unfortunately, reconstruction efforts that held real promise for formerly enslaved people did not last. The equality promise did not come to pass. All right, so you may ask yourselves, what happened to the reconstruction efforts that the Republican Party put in place? Again, let me remind you, the Republican Party before and after the Civil War was comprised of many black men. I show you this fact in several of my previous videos. However, as enthusiasm for the Southern Reconstruction efforts waned due to many of the federal and state legislatures, city councils, and other official positions being full of elected black officials. They did not pay attention to the undercurrent of white supremacy and the adversity to black rule gaining traction, especially in the formerly Confederate states. So that led up to the Compromise of 1877. And what was the Compromise of 1877, you may ask? Well, according to History.com, the Compromise of 1877 was an informal agreement between Southern Democrats and allies of the Republican Rutherford B. Hayes to settle the results of the 1876 presidential election and mark the end of the Reconstruction era. Immediately after the presidential election... What do you reconstruct then? You have to deconstruct to reconstruct. You have to deconstruct to reconstruct. What's the beginning of reconstruction, man? That's the beginning of them reconstructing history, right? Reconstructing reality. And then, okay, we're done with it for now. That's the end of this period, but we're going to still be reconstructing. And just look at these, you know, pay attention to these images, man. You know. Let me get this back, but 
let this soak in and see how far we've come in America <laughs> in 150 years or so that this would seem impossible, crazy. Some of this stuff, but 150 years ago, this was fact. Republican Party put in place. Again, let me remind you, the Republican Party before and... There are Nagas, right, already involved. And we know, we know this, right? But we like, why? Why? Why were so many Nagas at the tip top of things, right? Back to the more and more war. Back to the more and more war. Just because they black, they all skin folk, ain't kin folk, and all kin folk ain't con folk. Con, con. Now, you got, you know, case by case. You got good knocks, bad knocks, but you got to pay attention, man, to who, who was forming up and shaping up around you first, man. Let's go. And after the Civil War was comprised of many black men. I sh Look at this, man. Just look at it, man. Look like a look like a couple of fezzes. I see some fezzes over here, man. <laughs> oh, I see the fezzes. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, the Mason. Yeah, the Mason drop. Yeah, yeah. Right now we got the black boule today. And you know, hey. I mean, it's right in your face. You're wondering who's behind the scenes. <laughs> You're wondering where do they go? It's right in your face. You see it, right? So what's changed in 150 years that this might seem kind of odd? They kind of went behind the scenes more. You know, you see some scattered around now, but they kind of went behind the scenes more. And the other thing is that, you know, you got... High level Nagas when you talk 18, 12, 13, 14, 15, the Kum say and them. I mean, these were these were leaders, 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 you know, orators and warriors, you know what I'm saying? Like Nagas, Nagas, you know what I mean? So, you know, they kind of had to, you know, do whatever treaties, right? You know, with whoever they had to, man, to team up against the most powerful of us. And this is what it looks like. It's they teamed up, formed their confederacy against a special breed of Nagas, a Nagas that were indigenous Negroes, <laughs> real indigenous Negroes, not just indigenous to all the earth. We're talking about, you know, land that was, you know, by birthright, by heritage, that they were representing their heritage on this land. They weren't strangers on the land. This was land that was the delivered by Joshua, by Moshe. You know, this is promised land, man. What are you talking about? But whose promise is it? It's not every black man's promise to be right here on this land. <laughs> it's a tribe's promise, you know what I'm saying? You got melanin on both sides of the war, my nigga. This is what you really are seeing. And, you know, really how powerful of a statue, a stature, you know, you had to have and even they had to have for them to even team up like this. It, just, it lets you know what the world is looking like. It's letting you know what Europe's power is looking like. If they got to team up with all these Nagas against us, they had to team up. They couldn't do it by themselves. It just, a picture's worth a thousand words. They say a hundred thousand in this case. <laughs> you see Nagas teaming up like Voltron against a Naga in real time. I show you this fact in several of my previous videos. However, as enthusiasm for the Southern Reconstruction... I see a lot of fezzes in the place to be, you know. ...efforts waned due to many of the federal and state legislatures, city councils, and other official positions being full of elected black officials. Nagas, you know, they, they was on the, you know, they put them in these leadership positions, right? But it wasn't white people putting you in these positions. It was that... He was already in these positions. <laughs> you just are reconstructing history. Officials, they did not pay attention to the undercurrent of white supremacy and the adverse. This is what the government's looking like, man. City to black rule gaining traction, especially in the formerly Confederate states. So that led up to the Compromise of 1877. Okay. And what was the Compromise of 1877, you may ask? Well. According to History.com, 
The Compromise of 1877 was an informal agreement between Southern Democrats and allies of the Republican Rutherford B. Hayes to settle the results of the 1876 presidential election and mark the end of the Reconstruction era. Immediately after the presidential election in 1876, it became clear that the outcome of the race hinged largely on the disputed returns from Florida, Louisiana, and South Carolina. The only three states in the South with Reconstruction era Republican governors still in power. As a bipartisan congressional commission debated over the outcome early in 1877, allies of the Republican Party candidate Rutherford Hayes met in secret with moderate Southern Democrats in order to negotiate acceptance of Hayes' election. The Democrats agreed not to block Hayes' victory on the condition that the Republicans withdraw all federal troops from the South, thus consolidating Democratic control over the region. As a result of the so-called Compromise of 1877, Florida, Louisiana, and South Carolina became Democratic once again, effectively bringing an end to the Reconstruction era. Again, let me remind you, the Democratic Party at that time was the party of the South, aka the Old Confederacy. It is not the Democratic Party of today. What did occur was lawless violence against Black men, women, and children across the United States. According to the EJI Equal Justice Initiative .org, during the 12 years from 1865 to 1877, thousands of black people were killed, attacked, sexually assaulted, and terrorized by white mobs and individuals were shielded from arrest and prosecution. These white perpetrators of violence were never held accountable. On the contrary, they were often celebrated. Also, according to the EJI.org, in a series of devastating decisions, the U.S. Supreme Court blocked congressional efforts to protect people of color and instead cede control to the same white Southerners who used terror and violence to stop black people from participating in political processes. They upheld new laws codifying racial hierarchy and embraced a new constitutional order defined by states' rights. Continuing from the EJI.org website, within a decade after the Civil War, Congress began to abandon the promises of assistance to millions of formerly enslaved black people. Violence, mass lynchings, and lawlessness enabled white Southerners to create a regime of white supremacy in black disenfranchisement alongside a new economic order that continued to exploit black labor. White officials in the North and West similarly rejected racial equality, codifying racial discrimination, and occasionally embraced the same tactics of violent racial control seen in the South. Again, as I have mentioned in many of my videos, there is a reason most students do not receive any instruction on this part of American history. In my opinion, there is a concerted effort to keep people ignorant, so white people may feel like they attained all their wealth via legitimate means and that black people for some reason have never been able to get it together. I have also covered in some of my videos the documented black towns that were destroyed, flooded, or massacred by lawless white people that often used one accusation of crime to justify displacing by force entire towns and or killing or lynching many of its black citizens. I'm not going to go deeper into this subject for the sake of time. However, I challenge you to research slavery slash indentured servitude, reconstruction, and sundown towns on your own. It may open your eyes to why things are the way they are in the United States and why, to this day, governors like Rick DeSantis don't want you to know true history in the United States. DeSantis recently signed legislation to... He said sundown towns. I got to dig on this. <clears throat> it's a lot, man. You know, I'm digging on it, man. Sundown towns, man. I'm sure y'all heard of this, man. Sundown towns. Let's see what we got. Sundown towns. What is it, man? All white communities, neighborhoods, or counties exclude blacks and other minorities. Oh, okay. Those are some towns that be like, oh, you better be out of here by sundown town. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I got you, boss. I, I see, I see where you at. I'm sure they got a lot of these still today, huh? You better get out of here <laughs> before nightfall. Hi, Jack City. Let's get a few more minutes, and I want to talk antebellum. And to stop Florida citizens from understanding their own history. Wow. It's 2023, and still the United States refuses to come to grips with the truth. Anyway, I could go on. I don't want to lose you. So, how did eugenics erase black history? Uh oh. I'm going to read the introduction of the book I mentioned, War on the Week by Edwin Black. This should give you some idea of what the eugenics movement was all about. 
Just be forewarned, it's somewhat lengthy, but I feel it's necessary in order to understand what went on in the United States and abroad during the onset of the height of the eugenics movement. Just as a disclaimer, I don't receive any compensation for talking about this book, nor have I ever been contacted by the author or its publisher. Okay, so the introduction goes on to state, Voices haunted the pages of every book. This particular book, however, speaks of the never born, for those whose questions have never been heard, for those who have never existed. Throughout the first six decades of the 20th century, hundreds of thousands of Americans and untold numbers of others were not permitted to continue their families by reproducing. Selected because of their ancestry, national origin, race, or religion, they were forcibly sterilized, wrongly committed to mental institutions where they died in great numbers, prohibited from marrying and sometimes even unmarried by state bureaucrats. In America, this battle wiped out whole ethnic groups was fought by army. Yeah, I mean, this would be a silver linings playbook, right? Forcibly sterilized. <clears throat> Excuse me, part one, you know, I said, hey, who would, uh, what type of people would be sterilizing people, right? Like, just think about, I know we talk about crazy stuff, but, you know, what kind of people would do this? Forcibly. Now, after Reconstruction, after they reconstructed things and now they look like the good guy, now you vote for them. I want Biden. I want Trump. Trust me, bro. Trump's for the blacks, man. Trust me. Biden, oh, man. We don't know what he's going to do about the tenderonies. Oh, which one are we going to vote for? Who's better for black people? Knock if you don't wake your ass up. Who you vowing to? They've reconstructed the place. We vow into them, right? Forcibly sterilized. That almost sounds, you know, like some tenderoni talk. <laughs> you know, when they talk about, uh, you know, you, you don't have you don't have to, but if you want to get to the grocery store, if you want to go to the movies, you might want to sterilize yourself with wrongfully committed. To mental institutions. Well, that sounds like prison to me. Because these prisons, damn near, damn near exactly as that. You know, just cages, you know what I'm saying, for monogas that are many times wrongly committed or, you know, they were put in these positions. I mean, you know what I'm saying just because of the of the environment, man. Because of the force, forcibly sterilizing, because of the forced invasion. You invade these indigenous Negroes. Now they are in the streets doing street stuff. Then you create your laws because, you know, you create the problem, right? Remember this, alchemy, right? <laughs> you know, we, we know how they're doing, our chemical serpents. They're creating the problem. And then they offer a solution. And their solution is police, jails, institutions, Right? Oh, you want to be successful? Well, 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 we'll first take your money. We'll take your land. We'll take everything from you so that you have nothing. And then we'll reconstruct this matrix so that now you have to go through us. Now you need paper money, right? You need dollars. Oh, you better get crypto because the money's going to do this. And we're going to now have to. Oh, you don't have to do it. But if you want to survive, you, you might want to be. You have all these other <laughs> They created the problem. Now they're offering solutions. Well, yeah, drop But if you don't do it, yeah, I guess I'm forcibly having to do it, right? Forcibly being sterilized. So eugenics is happening on a lot of levels and being wrongly committed to these institutions. We already know about that. We already know about that. Dying in great numbers. We know about that. Right, boss? We got receipts on this stuff. Prohibited from bearing? Wow, I mean, we know about that. Because <laughs> they offering our sisters a big bag sometimes with this, you know, get your husband out the house and child support this and that. You know what I'm saying? They, they've they manipulated the system to turn us against our queens and our queens will get us because they get a bigger bag without us sometimes if they hustling. Prohibited from marrying. Or you're trying to get the bag so much that it just, what do you need to get married? A big fancy house, a big fancy car. And this. So 
even not having enough dollars can prohibit you from it. Like it's an institution, man. It's a mental institution. And sometimes even unmarried by state bureaucrats. <laughs> wow. So all this to keep you from procreating, right? From creating more life, from being healthy, strong. Now, who are they that they would do this to anybody but to you, my naga, to us, right? And then who are we that it takes all this to even control us? And now we've been sterilized through our foods and GMOs and all this other stuff, right? So has the game, you know, are they not at war on us no more? Or is the game just been reconstructed? You know, has it just been changed? And the more I look at it, I'm like, yo, 2023, you can see the same blueprint today. Armies with guns, nor by hate sex at the margins. Rather, this pernicious white gloved war was prosecuted by esteemed professors, elite universities, wealthy industrialists, and government officials colluded in a racist pseudoscientific movement called eugenics. The purpose? create a superior Nordic race to perpetuate the campaign, widespread academic fraud combined with almost unlimited corporate philanthropy to establish the biological rationales for persecution, employing a haze amalgam of guesswork, gossip, falsified information, and polysyllabic academic arrogance. The eugenics movement slowly constructed a national bureaucratic and juridical infrastructure to cleanse America of its unfit. Suspicious intelligence tests, colloquially known as IQ tests, were invented to justify incarceration of a group labeled feeble-minded. Often the so-called feeble-minded were just shy, too good-natured to be taken seriously, or simply spoke the wrong language, or were the wrong color. Bang. What's the wrong language, Hebrew? And what are they talking about? Uh, cleanse? What they say? Cleanse America of its unfit? Like, 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 mom? Who, who you want to cleanse, man? You want to clean the copper color nuggets found here, man? In America, ball. Antebellum, from Latin phrase antebellum, literally before the war, see antebellicus, huh. okay, in U.S. usually in reference to the American Civil War, and again, when they talk American Civil War, just realize as we recon. America's been at war at least 93% of the time, you know, 100%, 100%. So they're talking, I mean, what? <laughs> when they say civil war, it just sounds so black and white. And then when you look at <laughs> who's fighting, it's all Indians and indigenous Negroes. And those that are invading us that look like us, the Spaniards, right? We went through this last time, the swarthy Spaniards. You see what it's looking like, man? You see what we're looking at? Look, man. I love this picture uh, that we got on the IG. Yeah, after all my naga surfing a wave with 432 the drop. From day one, man. My day one wave surfers, man. Where you at? Hey, all my. On my brand new wave service, I see you belly flopping, surfing the wave, popping off. Hey man, I love this. I love this drive. Love to uh, real history, man. Doing this picture is worth ten thousand words, a hundred thousand. King Charles looked like us, man. I didn't paint this. This is on the panel in Lima, Peru. This is in Peru. It's a whole panel full of all these Inca and all these chiefs that are now being <clears throat> rolled up on by black ass King Charles. Now, is he the only melanated, you know, um, 
person on this on this quest to conquer these copper color people out to Hawapa. You see that H U A? That's Hawa. You don't gotta look too far to see Hawa's name and these people in our lands like Hawaii and our cons like Joshua, Hawa Mock, Ki Hawa Hawa. <laughs> look around, you see Hawa everywhere. H U A. Sometimes H O A or it might just be O A or U A. It's still Hawa Hawa Hawa. The H is sometimes sonic because it's a breath. Ah, wow. So you might see a U-A, a O-A, a H-U-A, H-A-W-A, like Hawaii, H-A-W-A-H, you know what I mean? So Hawaii is right here, and who's who's conquering Hawaii's people? <sighs> Zion Marley said, bring out that Nebuchadnezzar, Charles V connection. We must got to do that. And look out for Presto 122. We coming in hot, man. Hey, Shalom to the tribe, man. It feels so good, man. <laughs> and this ain't Presto John, but it might feel like it, man. We coming in hot, Presto 122. Can you believe it? 122 installments of the Presto John investigation, man. Get the full drop. Go surf the wave on our playlist, man. Get the full drop. Whew, hate to watch all the cons, man. Uh, you know, sparking this off because y'all doing this, man. Hey, the water to my queen. Yeah, you know I'm saying Chef Condi, man. It's been my queen for a long time. Mighty long time. Man, we got like 15 years strong, man. And let me tell you, man, she's been with the con, man, from the good, the bad, the ugly, the shaky, the the level, the <laughs> the crooked, the straight. You know, you, whenever you think about all the vibrations you've been getting from the drop and drop nation, just know it started right here at home, <clears throat> you know, right here in the living room, <laughs> wherever we at, wherever we move it to, staying afloat, staying, you know, being moving water. And it's always, you know, a strong queen behind a king, you know what I'm saying? And Ship Candy, man, is <sighs> the glue, you know what I'm saying? And um, I couldn't have done none of this without Ship Candy. So, you got AI for me, man. You need triple honors, man, for Chef Condi for making a con a con, man. You know, really, you know, making sure my head is on straight, making sure, you know what I'm saying, I got the rhythm, making sure, you know, we got a strategy for victory. You know what I mean? And Chef Condi deserves her flowers, man. <laughs> hey, uh, Chef Condi. Hey, these are just, just some drop moments, man. Don't mind us, man. Just a little mushy stuff. Yeah, we got a punching bag. Sometimes you got to kick something, man. <laughs> Hey, allow a while. Let's go, man. Let's go. Oh, man. It feels so good, man. Get a little mushy sometimes, man. All right. Antebellum, man. <laughs> so, antebellum, antebellum. Okay. Latin phrase, antebellum, literally before the war, right? They say, see, antebellus. Let's see what this bellus. Bellicus. Inclined to fighting. Inclined. I mean, we we breaking this down, right? Warlike, valorous. See, these are two kind of different connotations, a little bit. One they say is before the war, so they're just relating this bellios, bellicose with war. When you're looking up this bellicose, to Latin duelum, right? Duelum. <laughs> Like a duel. Ka, ka, duel. Now, when did it become this bell situation? And whenever I think bell, you know, of course, of course we are relating it, dodge the vowels, right, to the right? Because this is their God of War flow. This is their JC. This is all this, man. Because an idol among the ancient Chaldeans and Syrians representing the sun. Who's the child of the sun? <laughs> Estebanico as a more, more from Morocco. Ka, ka, Esteban, uh, the Christ child, right? Yeah. 
who Christ means anointed. Who's their anointed? Right. JC, he's the son of God. Dodge the vows. So they came with their Baal. They came with their son. Worshiping, representing the son. You got to go through the son to get through the father. So when these Christianites today, they know they're Israel, but they can't let go of the son. You don't see the play. You go directly to Hawaii. You don't go through the sun. Hawaii created the sun. Whether you're talking about a man or whether you're talking about the sun. <laughs> I mean, you know, our play is never to go through David or through anybody. We go directly to the creator. Then we can start getting on the frequency of the Preston John investigation. Now we can start researching on nobility, but all that would be vanity if we weren't KTC. It's no point in researching King David, Queen Sheba, none of the royals tapping into nothing noble. If you're not keeping nobility within your house, within yourself, you got to keep the code. You got to be direct to Hawaii. You got to listen directly. When you listen to your parents, you're not listening through nobody else. You're listening directly to your parents. No idols, right? Rule number one. Ain't this rule number one? Most high over everything, right? Most high over everything, boss. God, this is why we rocking my jigger. This is why we doing this. Because this, they represent the sun. All their, all their uh, clothing lines and all their, you know, labels and all this stuff. It's all representing the sun, man. We represent Hawaii. We representing the most high over everything, over the sun. Because the most high is the most high. <laughs> it just makes sense. They're representing their Baal. So you got us talking about Baal, right? <laughs> God. And they got you spinning on the ball, right? Okay, okay. Slow down, drop. So are we talking about war or are we talking about valor? Templar, just take the wheel <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Templar going to take us there. We're talking about war or we're talking about valor? Because we're talking valor, right? Let's go back. Actually, let's keep that. Let's keep that. Let's keep this. Because it says it right here, right? Action of valor. War. Now, this is what they're breaking down from the what they call the best etymology for dual dualism. So far, has been proposed by Peniot, 1987, who posits a dim. Dwell no to bonus. Dwell no meant quite good or quite brave. So, look, man, we talking about something good or bad. They put the bail on it, the bail on it, because, you know, what they represent, because to them, their son is brave. Their son is valor. They're giving representation to their son, right? They represent the sun. I mean, do I do I gotta pit, pull up son of God? Huh? Huh? Do I? They represent the sun, and many times they put the sun behind the sun, <laughs> right? If I say son of God, I ain't gonna get caught up with this. But if I say son of God, because right, you know I'll I'll start going in bone on this situation here, man. On this Ezu situation. Oh, now they got a movie. Oh, the movie. No, boss. This guy. This hijack right here. Yeah, this is their son. Hey, this is your Yahweh Shah. You just want to repaint his image? No images, boss. No graven images, right? Because they're worshiping, representing the son. Uh, how about paintings? Because, you know, he might get closer. <laughs> oh, we got some Nagas. We got some Yahweh shots. Oh, this black guy. <laughs> yeah. They like to put the sun behind the sun, is all I'm saying. They like to put the sun behind the sun. A lot of these images, there's always some sun going on behind the sun. So, are we talking. Are we talking S O N? Right? Or are we talking S-U-N? And why is the S-U-N behind the S-O-N unless they're just trying to 
subliminally tell you that behind the S O N is the S U N, right? <laughs> because it's all about sun worship, right? But not the sun you see in the sky today. Now they got their own Saturn sun, right? Now we're getting deeper, right? Now we're getting deeper. Yeah. But they like to put the sun behind the sun. That's the point. They like to put the sun behind the sun. So is it an act of valor or is it just war, right? I guess it depends on what side you're on. Are we talking about something good, quite good? Brave, or are we talking about evil, wicked war? Because if they're talking about war, civil war, we're talking evil. But in their opinion of themselves, as they are teaching this to their children, they are brave to come to this uh, unknown land and and you know rid it of all its evils, right? Spread their sun, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't make this up. My naga. Why you put the S-U-N behind the S-O-N unless you let us know that that's what it represents, right? For centuries, <laughs> it's always the sun behind the sun. Uh-oh. Well, I guess somebody see it clearly. We're still talking about the Atlantean sun god. Hijack City. These are the idols. These are the Baals. Yeah, this is what the Chaldeans is rocking. The Egyptians is rocking. The Syrians is rocking. This is what they spread into our land. This is what Hawaii's ridden in the land of this sun worship, all this idolatry. This is what Joshua was fighting for to purify the land so that we could be M H O E. No idols. All these nations rocking their idols. All right, let's go. So is it good? Is it brave? Antibellum, is it before the good? <laughs> who's good? Before the brave, who's brave? I mean, this is just a deeper way. Of it. I got way deep on antebellum, but we're going to dig some more about the antebellum period. But, you know, they say before the war. I just want to dig deeper, right? And anti, you're talking before. They say in front of, right? Okay, okay. Interesting how they say from pi and t, right? <laughs> now you're talking opposites, right? Huh? Uh, we could get deeper. Anti before or anti opposite? Now, ant means front, but in front of what, right? Or before, is it, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, look, man, we're talking ant, T, opposites, facing opposites. Whoa, whoa. Let's put this together. Let's get it bigger. <laughs> like, draw going crazy. Yeah, man, it's crazy talk. <laughs> Hey, this uh, crazy talk is brought to you by Soul Bone Podcast. Hey, dig on the Soul Bone Podcast dropping soon. Hey, out to the battles. Hey, out to all the cons. Uh, Con Club A, you know, all the cons. Uh, my Jiggy, Yosef, the real, all the cons, man. You know what I'm saying? That's contributed to, uh, you know, episode one. <laughs> and uh, CJ's working on the editing. So we're going to drop some some snippets and sneak peeks real soon for you, man. So, hey, Thawa Da. Uh, yeah, that's the Soul Bone Podcast. Um, <laughs> crazy talk, yeah. Anti-facing opposite. Facing opposite of what? Facing opposite of something that is good. Eeks, right? Eeks, right? The facing opposite of someone brave. We talking antebellum, we talking eighteen hundreds, we talking America Revolutionary War, we talking Shikamago War for the first twenty years on the front lines, cause they didn't want to make no treaties, right? Eighteen twelve, oh you talking Tacum say 
somebody very good, somebody very brave, trying to drive up the entire nation on these hijacks. You're talking about someone very brave on the front line, man. Would have had more support. It'll be a different America today. If the Kumse had the support of all the cons and they didn't do treaties, these more-ish treaties, if they didn't get our people on board for these little perks, this little land that they could not control once these people turned up on them, they stabbed everybody in the back with these treaties, right? No one kept their word, or did they? Behind the scenes, maybe they did. Huh? Because uh, knocking behind the scenes just like us, man. We, we know this. So maybe they did keep their word with they people. But with these Hebrews led by Tecumse, these other tribes were confederate against Tecumse, man. So who? Who are they anti? Who are they facing opposite? Who are they against? They are against somebody. Good. Quite good. <laughs> and quite brave. Oh, we're talking about context, huh? So they might sum it up as, oh, yeah, this is just before the war. Antibella. Or is it anti against opposite? Good, opposite, bravery. Yeah. Opposite the comb, say, opposite us. Because again, even after this, we kept fighting. Look at these war. We These are the same Nagas. All these are the same Nagas. They just label them different things. Because you see it pick right up with the Cherokee again, right? The Shikamagua. They just don't say Shikamagua. But these have to be the same Shikamagua, because not all the Cherokee were down with no uh, treaties. Oh, this is a story lesson, not his story lesson. The Shikamagua Cherokee refers to the group that separated From the greater body of Cherokee, man. Hold up. Because they didn't want to. Because the majority of the greater body of Cherokee wished to make peace with the Americans or the hijack Americans, right? Still in the title, Americans. We doing this piece by piece, brick by brick. We just getting started. This is just the intro, my night. <laughs> Like, literally, this is just the intro. All right, fall back. Get cozy like us. Straight up, say, get cozy. It's all good. It's all good. Maybe you've seen this before. I don't know. Maybe you've seen this before. Oh, wow. Maybe you've seen this before. <coughs> oh, wow. I'm good. My, my voice is getting stronger as I go. It's crazy, man. I thought I was out of here, but. I'm right back. I bounce back like round ball, man. I'm right back at you. Let's go. A native of America originally applied to the aboriginals or copper color races found here, boss. Not brought here, boss. Right? Indigenous Negro. This is what they mean. Look at it, man. Pause it. Read it. Get some water while you read two words found here, okay? The Wada Hawa for the Agua. Yeah, Hawa is Agua, is Hawa, is the water. Let's go, is the life. Existence, that's what Hawa means, to live, to, to be, to exist. They say Eve had Hawa in her name or was Hawa, you know, by the sounding of her name because she represents life, first mother of existence, they say, first mama, 
God-given life. She carries the frequency of Hawa. They called her Kawa. You confused why Mother of Life Eve, they would call her, <laughs> uh, would be named Life? You confused? All right, let's go. Some people confused, man. You know, we're talking existence. She represents existence. Let's go. <sighs> found here. All right, found here, my knock. But now, applied to the descendants of Europeans, right? Europeans that looked like you. Think about it. I mean, a picture's worth a million words. Because if Nagas look just like you, it changes the entire script, right? We now got to take accountability as black people for our own demise, right? Because there's a Naga to my left rocking his locks <laughs> and a Naga to my right stealing all the gold and bringing the sun god symbol. That's not our towel. That's their towel, right? The towel means the monument, you know what I'm saying? The mark. But what's their mark? What's their monument? What's their anointed? Their anointed is not our anointed. Our anointed is Hawa. Our anointed is the creator. <laughs> their anointed is the sun, right? So they have a different towel than you. A different mark, a different sign. Their sign is the sun. God. That's the European. <laughs> Europeans are black. We went over this last time, right? Swarthy, right? Benjamin Franklin. All right. Now apply it to descendants of Europeans born in America. Don't that hit a little different? I know you read this a hundred thousand times, but don't that hit a little different when we do this in this frequency? All oh, praise the <clears throat> Birdman hand, bro, right? Because what's a native, man? Love to natural by law who I saw do this exact same thing. And I appreciate you, man, because it's just, you know, you got to take it back to the root. What's a native? I got to let you know, we got to figure this out while they doing eugenics on us, while they trying to erase us, right? So they trying to erase nature, huh? When I say native, stop thinking of some image. I'm talking about nature, original. This don't say aboriginal. You just have to put in what's native because they say native. So we say native. We talking ab? No, we're talking original, right? So these people that's claiming native, are they claiming original? Originals here? To be first born for real, for real. Born with the bean. What's the bean? That's Hawa. <laughs> that's that's life. That's existence. The being to be Hawa is to be natural. Hey, I'm natural by law because we natural by Hawa's law. Not acquired, not no slave. Natural. What's natural? You look up natural, it's going to say produced by the creator, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. We're in 1828. Noah Webster Dictionary, man. Oh, you seen this before? Cool. Maybe it's going to hit a little different this time. In a general sense, whatever is made or produced, a word that comprehends all the works of, say it with me, <sighs> Wow. And look through nature up to, to nature's God. <laughs> Meta, metonymy, 
of the effect of the cause nature is used for the agent <clears throat> creator, right? The power that produces them. So we're talking about the power that produces the trees and, the, and life, right? <laughs> or we mean they are produced by God, right? By Hawa, the creator, the creator, the creator. We can't talk nature without talking Hawa. You just can't do it. You can't talk native without talking natural, produced by Hawa, right? So a native is natural, by law, produced by Hawa. Cool. Now, by law, right, we have our boundaries. We have our, our areas because, you know, separation is natural. Yeah, they want to be black power, everybody, everybody together. Separation is natural. When you got dreadlocks, you got you got your locks, you need your locks to be separate to a degree, right? It don't mean that they're not together. It just means that that's their nature, right? So <laughs> our nature is to have our tribal areas and some separation from other tribes we have to have our own tree we got to have our own water you know so that we can produce for our tribe because ain't nobody gonna look out for our tribe like our tribe that's just fact that's not separatism racism no naturally originally we have our boundaries and we respected each other's space boundaries i put it like this since anybody confused out there don't you have a house or your apartment or whatever you, your spot is, you know, wherever you at, right? <laughs> oh, I'm black, so I could just walk in your apartment or walk in your house and kick down your door and jam you up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Don't you want some separation? Don't you want your own bedroom? You have a party. Is everybody invited in your bedroom? So everybody's not invited to our land. It's sacred space. Only a hijack doesn't have any type of care. Only a hijack has no value for your boundaries and say, but we're all humans. We belong to the human race. We're the human family. We should all, it's one earth. It's for everybody. That's hijack city. This is not us trying to, oh, you know, act like we better than yada, yada. But my naga, separation is natural. If I can't just walk in your house for no reason, you can't just walk on our land for no reason. It's separation. It's a it's a place for us to live. You're not. They weren't supposed to be able to just roll up in our neighborhoods with their police forces and jam us up with their marshal this and marshal that. We supposed to have boundaries, my naga. I'm just talking natural boundaries for the original people. These people are natural. You can't talk natural without talking Hawaii. You can't talk native without talking natural. You can't talk American, <laughs> Ka, without talking native. Natural people, original people, they say aboriginal. Right? <laughs> we're talking Abba. <laughs> we're talking Abba Ama. Nah, we're talking original. And we're talking Abba Ama. <laughs> um, Ama Abba's original people that are copper color, but not all copper color are camp folk. Because you have others that are either, you know, in other confederacies that might be original uh, by credo, but they don't rock with the original creator, right? So they're not in the original frequency anymore, right? So these copper people are found here by Europeans that look just like us. Con, con, con. <laughs> this invasion happened. This is not Shakespeare, man. This this happened, right? This is real. This is a painting on the pedal in Lima, Peru, right? <laughs> See it right there, Peru, right? Con. All right, just saying, when they talk antebellum, are they saying pre-war? Are they saying anti-brave, anti-good, anti-real Nagas that are fighting, that are valors, that are warlike?
because that's what the Kumse is when we talking big tech the Kumse. We're going to get some more on this antebellum talk. We'll just see what's happening during all these dates. They're going to pull up 18 is 18 at 19 is we still at it. They, now they're talking antebellum pre-civil war. Well, pre-civil war was Texas, Texas Indian War, Seminole War. Southwest Indian War, Navajo, Apaches, California Indians, Udall, Puget, you know, everybody, man. Mexicans, man. Totaxes, man. Seminoles. They invading the islands. They're invading the Philippines. <laughs> right? And they call those banana wars. <laughs> Come home, man. And the Nagas, we got them them Filipino pictures up of, you know, these were all Nagas, man. At this time, all these banana wars, but first they had to get their own uh, Negroes, indigenous Negroes in check, right? They had to go through, I'm, man, I need you to know how warlike you are. I need you to know how warlike you are, Manaki. 1776, even though we know it started before that, Let's just use that as, as the marker, right? 1776 to the Philippine War. Philippine War is 1898. 1776 to 1898. They're just fighting Mexicans, Amaru Khans, man. Real Nagas, Americans, man. Copper color races found here. That's all they fighting. Come on, man. They want to talk <laughs> slavery? That means you are just like Benjamin Franklin. They don't want to darken up these people right now, right? They don't want to darken up nobody else. Because they over here trying to whitewash everything. Why darken uh, the sons of America, right? <laughs> what do you say? They're scouring the planet. And since detachments of English from Britain sent to America will have their places at home so soon supply increase so largely here, why should the Palatine Boers or more <laughs> be suffered to swarm into our settlement? By herding together, establish their language. What language, man? Manners. What manners? What customs? To the exclusion of ours. Like, we ain't going to be hijacking. They know it. Why should Pennsylvania, founded by the English, how are you going to found something that's already populated, become a colony of aliens? Man, you, you the alien, Jack. You ain't from here. You ain't original. You're not natural. You're not native here. Who will shortly be so numerous as to Germanize us? We're talking Germany, right? So to be Germanized means that you are being blackened. This is what Hitler is trying to get them <laughs> to, uh, you know, see that whatever they doing, <laughs> that these were originally black people doing it. So Y'all should just do something else, man. But they're all using our titles because it says uh, what we call a swarthy complexions, as are the Germans also. So the Germans are dark, swarthy black people. And the term is Germanized. And now you got germs like it's a negative thing, right? Come on, man. We've been Anglified because that's what they want to do is Anglify them, right? Anglify us. And we will never adopt our languages or the Nagas will never adopt their languages or customs. Well, damn. Hey, Merry Christmas, right? Because <laughs> Nagas is definitely doing that. But not the real ones, man. <laughs> not the real Nagas today waking up, man, popping off. Man, we, we leaving these customs alone. They're Halloween and Easter's and Valentine's and whatever they doing, man. We New Year's this and all this hijack. But we speak in English, but we learning, man. You know what I'm saying? We... we <laughs> we speak in Shalawan, man. We we learning to get in our frequency, man. Any more than they can acquire our complexion. So we see it's all about complexion. We're talking swarthy, 
Again, the number of purely white people in the world is very small. So how did this change in the last couple hundred years? They just started popping off. They don't produce like that. Scientifically speaking, they don't produce like that to be the majority in a 150, couple hundred years. That's crazy talk. Couple hundred years, all it took, y'all. Now, now you're the majority because of what? Eugenics. Uh-oh, now we back on eugenics. This is all about eugenics. So because they're very small, we got to... They got to be, have their foot on our neck. They got to put their images on the screen, make us think that they're the majority because we do the magic and so will it be. If we believe it, it will be, right? If we don't believe it, that's the ass, right? But all of Africa is black. All of Asia black. All of America is what? Holy black, right? Holy tawny, right? We got before tawny just means dark complexion or sunburnt they say right and in europe the spaniards italian french everybody they just name it a couple but we already know they're swarthy so when i look at this european image of who they call the first european emperor charles the fifth charles kento charles e boy he's swarthy this is receipts, my naga, validation for those that still need it of what the earth is looking like in terms of royals, in terms of these families. This is what straight up is letting nagas know that you're the royals. That's why your head is on the crest. That's why Russia is named after you. That's why it's you. I didn't make this up. I, I didn't do this. <laughs> this ain't my doing. <laughs> we just talking about the royal crest of the Andrews family. Rusha, Ross, Ross, right? I don't need this link to do that. I could just put in Andrews family crest. I could just Google Andrews Fanny Crest. I ain't got to say black man on the head, black head on Andrews Crest. I ain't got to do nothing. I could just say Andrews Crest. And what do you see? You see Royal Nagas, right? You see Regal Negro. Huh? <laughs> What's that nationality? They're going to say Scotland, right? They're going to connect it to the Scotia flow. We know we're talking Russia. We're talking, I mean, Russia is pretty much all of Asia. All of that Asia is, is damn near Russia. That's how much Rus land, that's how much Naga land we're talking about. English, Scottish, Norse, man. Hey, stop the black play. But either way, we're talking Nagas. Now we got Nagas on both sides. Just because you come from Europe don't mean you this or you that. We got real Hebrews over there, real royal Hebrew, you know what I'm saying, tribes fighting the hijack there. We got real royal Hebrew tribes in America fighting the tribes here. We got our tribes been scattered. We know that. But we see that they do a more scattering. So this is what, straight up, <laughs> straight up, this is what it is. It's just so good to see clearly what not is these days, man. You know, a long time ago, this stuff seemed, you know, uh, like new, like it was just hard to believe. And now the validation is something that cannot be ignored. I'm going to take our time, man. They're trying to slow down our flow. They always try to do this because now they get distracted and then, then they click on the next clip on, on the tube. But we got real way service over here, man. We know what's popping. We know. We know what they do. You got real patient cons around here. I know when they're on that play play. But let's go, man. View more. They want. They don't want to show us no more. Look at this, man. Y'all see this? I'm trying to click view more. They say no, no boss. 
Ain't nothing to see here, boss. You can't see no more, boss. All right, man, I'm going to come back to us, man. This thing's tripping. We got him, though, man. We're going to beat him at the end game. Oh, now they want to show some images. People tripping, man. Y'all tripping. So how you think these Naga Khans got, <laughs> got on this crest? Then they try to take him off. <laughs> but we still see him on the cur on the family crest. Let go. Yeah, they over here on that play play. But you see it, man. We see what it is, man. We see what it is. Let's get it back, man. We've been talking antebellum. Um, you know, is it pre-war or is it just anti naga You know, is it just opposite of bravery? Is it opposite of good? And is this the good that they're opposite from? You know what I'm saying? It's... Is there, uh, you know, claiming that we're savages and we're this and trying to reconstruct history, his story, to make them good and us evil all of a sudden. And now it's just about pre-war and war and war. War on these melodic cons all across the planet at the same damn time. I mean, 